Hello, everybody. Let me make sure. I hope everything sounds okay. Welcome, everybody, to Solo Rolling. Uh, I'm just trying to get my chat bot up. That is one thing I did forget. Uh, take that off. Hello, everybody. Again, welcome to Solo Rolling. If you are new to this stream, it is me playing Dungeons & Dragons all by myself. Uh, tonight we are playing um, Adventurers Wanted, the Dread Vault of Togozor? Uh, something around... Uh, some, it's probably close to that, at least. Um, so, if you've never watched before... Yes, Tanya, you are correct. I am not playing by myself because chat plays a very large part and keeping me alive on these streams. I always rely on, rely on you all to make the hard decisions for me so that I don't have to, because if I do, I die a lot. Um, you know what, Randall? I sure did make a flying character. That was before I realized, I'm looking at this cover now and I'm definitely thinking I'm probably gonna be underground a lot, aren't I? Um, that means that my flying is not going to help a whole lot. Um, another thing, speaking of who I'm going to be playing tonight, I am going to be playing Rufus Saberwing. Rufus Saberwing is a level 10. That's right. This one is a level 10 adventure. Um, uh, Aarakocra Ranger. So we'll see how this goes because um, I've never played a ranger myself but from what i've heard and what i've read about rangers they're not very good generally speaking um so we'll see how good uh it is for a solo adventure um yes level 10 i'm very excited about that uh one cool thing about this adventure or well, there's more than one cool thing about this adventure i'm sure um but uh i did get 10 uh or 2000 gold to spend beforehand and this adventure has it where you can uh, buy rare items for a thousand gold and um, uncommon items for 500 gold. So what I ended up going with is a longbow plus two, a bag of tricks, and braces of archery. Also for my subclass for uh, my Rufus Saber Wing is, I am a swarm, what is it called? It's called like a swarm uh, a swarm keeper. That's it. Uh, so as a swarm keeper, you pick what your uh, little swarm of tiny creatures are. Mine are hummingbirds. So I'm a giant hummingbird with a bunch of little tiny hummingbirds. Uh, so that should be fun. And thank you, Zoltar, for finding this name, Rufus Saberwing. It's apparently a type of hummingbird, which is uh, a pretty baller name, if I do say so myself. Um... So, uh, another cool thing about this adventure is, uh, yeah, Sash, I've got a plus 12 to hit, so let's hope that I don't miss with that. Um, another cool thing is because I'm playing solo, I get to take max HP, so I'm a level 10 ranger with 110 health. Seems like, that seems pretty good. Um, unfortunately, these, uh... These adventures, these adventurers wanted uh, uh, the series. They are meant to be short, but deadly adventures. I have played one other one before on a stream, and I played a two-player variant where instead of being a level five solo, you get to play as two level threes. And uh, I played with Dwayne from the Lawful Stupid Podcast, and we failed that one. We died. Um, so. We shall see if I will survive this one or not. Maybe with your all's help, uh, we will we will finish and we will um, see the end of it. But one way or another, uh, successful or dying, we should get to the end of this tonight. Um, so without further ado, I think we're ready to get right into it. I've got my character sheet up. You all will see my roles, so I'm not I can't even cheat, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Sash, I know. You're rooting against me. I know. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, so if you've never played a, a solo adventure before, you should. Um, especially if you're like uh, Power Helm, uh, wanting to play and find another group. 
these are fantastic to uh, kind of fill that uh, itch that D&D &D scratch if you don't quite have a group to play with. Or maybe if you're a forever DM like me, um, you can pick one of these up and play them, and they're very fun, as you will see shortly. Uh, so this is kind of the um, intro to solo D&D. &D. Uh, you know, there's no house, there's no death saves because if you die, you die. But to balance that out, you get max HP, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, with all that, uh, this is character creation level 10. You get 2,000 gold. Uh, this is uh, the amounts, and that's what I bought all my stuff for. And without further ado, I have not yet read this far, so this backstory is going to be news to me. Hopefully I'm not like a, uh, the right petals Adam did for this was, yes, um, the eight petals Argent is, that's like, that took me, I think, four nights to do, so that was like, um, I think it was probably like ten hours of content to do that, so, um, oh, whoops, I don't, oh, that is the wrong timer. I've got that turned off. I don't know why I did that. Sash, why did it send that when I've got that turned off? Oh well. Uh, go buy that adventure though. It's very fun. So, uh, the name Lady Elwyn Del... I am very bad at saying Dungeons and Dragons-esque names. Uh, Del... Delinora. Uh, the Fierce is legendary in the village of Woodholm. Slayer of fiends and horrors of all descriptions, her name is written into the histories of this small settlement in the Shadow Vale. Since arriving in the village of Woodholm, you have heard many tales of her bravery and exploits. She is revered here, a local hero. You are a traveler passing through Woodholm and staying at the local inn, but you are well accustomed to adventuring finding you, adventures finding you. And you are not surprised when a local noble turns up at your door. He introduces himself as Lord Brian Ferris, a counselor and lifelong resident of Woodholm. My friend, I will cut straight to the chase, my heart uh, to the heart of the matter. Um, Lady Delanor's tomb, just outside of Woodholm, on the edge of the wood, has been invaded by the undead. The townsfolk are petrified, and many who went there regularly to visit the tomb and receive blessings from Lady Delanora now will not go near the place. Lord Brian uh, goes to the, uh, goes on to tell you that uh, pilgrimage to the tomb is a major source of res revenue for the town, but now that the tomb has been defiled, no one is visiting anymore. Even worse, the undead are beginning to venture out of the tomb and have been seen wandering close to Woodhelm. We've got to do something. Lord Brian, on behalf of the Woodhelm Council, offers you 1,500 gold pieces. If you will enter the tomb and rid Woodholm of this threat once and for all. But be careful, most pilgrims just visit the site of the tomb. Actually entering into it exposes you to some devilish traps. Uh, Lady Delanora put these in place to deter looters. Uh, it seems there is never any rest for an adventurer as capable as yourself. Now go to entry one. Alright. So... I know, Sash. I need to do NPC voices on these. I used to back before it was called Solo Rolling, and then I think I just got nervous. Um, I'll try, but I think I might be done with NPC chat for a while now. Uh, the trip to Ganlin Woods takes you most of the day, but soon you are passing through small uh, copses of trees which mark the outskirts of the forest. Glancing back, you see the lights of the village of Woodholm begin to light up as darkness falls, Litter, little golden stars piercing the night. You wonder what the quest ahead will hold for you. You press on. Surely you must be getting close to the tomb now. Then the, through the trees, you see what looks like the light of lanterns and hear low murmuring. Pilgrims, perhaps? Uh, maybe these lanterns are uh, visitors who have not heard of the tomb's recent undead infestation. At the time, as you notice these lights, you see that you are passing a sort of low cliff. And in the face of this cliff is a cave entrance. Opening onto a tunnel that leads into the sub, uh, subterranean blackness. You check your backpack, inside are your supplies, as well as four healing potions, which the town mage of Wilhelm supplied you with. Uh, what will you do? Continue straight towards the light, towards the tomb of the... Uh, 
Uh, okay, so towards the tomb or enter the cave. Um, first off, let me go ahead and add to my notes. I've got four healing potions. Uh, I almost didn't take the bag of tricks because I was going to... Um, four healing potions. Uh, because I was going to buy ten healing potions instead. Um, yeah, it is a little, it's a little suspect that they're giving me four healing potions right at the rip. And we haven't even started yet. Uh, so, everybody, are we going towards the lights, towards the lit tomb of the lady? Or enter the cave? I'm not really sure why we would enter the cave, though. Um, I mean, the cave... Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm seeing in chat saying lady. I agree. I don't really know why I would go in the cave. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go to entry number 23. The cool thing about these are... Um, Oh, can you not see my mouse? Oh, there it is. Uh, go to entry 23, so I should be able to just click this. And bam, entry number 23 right there. You move forward uh, through the trees trying to make out the murmured conversation, but as you near the lights, you find that they don't really seem to be getting any closer. Choose between a survival or a perception DC 18? I guess we are big boy level 10 rolls. Um... I don't think Air Crocoros have dark vision. Um, I think my survival is probably higher. My survival's plus six, my perception's plus six. I'll do a survival just because. I don't know if hummingbirds can see in the dark or not. Um, I'm not seeing that I've got light, uh, light vision, so I don't think I do. Or dark vision. I'm hoping I got light vision. All right, let's do a... What did I get? My notes are right in front of my... Is that a 10? Did I really roll a 4? Oof. Okay. Well, we're starting off pretty rough. Uh, speaking of, tonight, um, if we roll a nat 20, if I roll a nat 20, at any point in the night, uh, the first nat 20, I will enter a giveaway, and all you need to do is be in chat and type in exclamation point giveaway, and then after like a 10 minute window, we will pick a winner, and that winner will get a bunch of... Um, stickers i'm unsuccessful so go to number 17 i'm probably gonna die i'm probably dead right here wandering through the forest focusing on the lights you fail to keep an iron where you're walking and soon you feel the ground give away beneath you Pfft, i can fly you fall up to your chest in a uh into a pit of sticky slimy quickstand as you are struggling to get out you see that the lights seem to be coming closer bobbing and weaving through the trees yeah of course they are they do not belong to the lamps of peasants these are disembodied balls of light seem to have a life of their own and they fly quickly towards you shimmering with an unholy radiance go to willow wisp combat sheet yeah i thought so uh oh this isn't working uh, willow wisp combat sheet uh I've got a map for this. Sometimes sometimes I won't need the maps. Um, let me just pop in Will-O-Wisp. Oh, I was on the right map that whole time. Okay. Yeah, I don't really need a map for this, but I'll, I'll keep that up for you guys. Um... How many will o wisp is it, two? Okay, so let's see this. Uh, place tokens, will o wisp PC. Uh, if your PC is not in the quicksand, um, I am in the quicksand. On each of the will o wisp turns, roll a d6. On a six, the wisp uses its invisibility. While invisible, the uh, attacks on the wisp are at disadvantage. The wisp come uh, straight towards you and attacks. Each round, the will o wisp will attack then move away as far as they can. As soon as you are free from the quicksand, they will cease to do this and will stay in melee range, dancing about your position. If you are trapped in the quicksand, they have one free attack, after which they fly away to the limit of its movement. Getting free of the quicksand takes one action and a successful DC 14 athletics check. You may repeat this action until successful. While in the quicksand, your attacks are at disadvantage and they have advantage. Oof. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and roll my initiative. 
I got a 19, so that's not terrible. They are going to get a... Oof, they got a they're going to get more than me because they've got a plus to that. All right. Whoa, their dex is plus nine? That doesn't sound right. That does not sound right. Um, oof. Um, he got there and there's only two. They're tiny and fast, that's true. Okay, well, it, first off, uh, it does say that if I did fall in the quicksand, they have one free attack. So I'll have them both fly up to me and then do their shock attack, which is a plus four. Oh, I'm actually, uh, I need to equip some armor real quick. I did forget to add armor to myself. All right, cool, so I've got a 15 armor class. Uh, that's not a lot. Okay, so they both uh, fly up to me and try to shock me with a three and a six with their pluses. Um, so those are both gonna miss no matter what. They've only got a plus four. Um, yeah, we'll we'll say that we'll say that um, with the. Uh, with my flying, I'll at least have given them those two freebie attacks, but now I think it makes sense that as an air Kokra, I could just fly out of that quicksand. Um, which I will do so, uh, right now. Oh no. It's their turn now. Uh, so let me roll both their 1d6 real quick to see if either of them turn invisible. They do not turn invisible. Okay, uh, so this is their actual in initiative turn. We will say I am now flying above the pit of uh, quicksand, and I will continue to fly. Um, so I think they are just going to... Um, it says they stay in melee range once I'm out of the quicksand. So they're going to just uh, fly up and try again their shock. And we just got to hope for really bad rolls. But unfortunately, I think that 13 is going to hit. That 13 is going to hit. Uh, so one of them is going to shock me pretty good for 10 uh, shocking damage, lightning damage. But like I said, I got 110 HP, so that's really not too bad. You know what kind of sucks? Um, I have never played a ranger, but I know that since they are in melee range and I've got a bow, um, that would be disadvantage. Uh, I also have um, two short swords, but I don't know. Uh, let me read my spells to you guys. Um, my AC is, uh, Sash, my HC is 15, but one of them rolled, uh, one of them rolled a 13, and then it, because I didn't add their pluses to those rolls, so that 13 was just a flat roll, and then it was a plus 4, so it was a 17. Um, so my spells are, I've got, uh, Mage Hand as, um, an at will from Swarm Keeper. I have got Absorb Elements, Fairy Fire, Good Berry, Hunter's Mark, uh, Pass Without a Trace, Spike Growth, Web, Conjure Animals, and Gaseous Form. Um, I don't want to burn any of my third level spell slots on these two little, little glowing balls of light. I feel like I could probably take them, hopefully, <laughs> uh, by myself, but... Oh, if you're looking at uh, this on the PC, you should be able to click on the screen or hover over it, and you should be able to pull up my character sheet. Um, in fact, I will I will post my character sheet in there. Um, but if I fly away, they'll get opportunity attacks on me. Um, I do have two attacks, though. I think I might do that. I think I might... Fl or should I just stay and just do my two attacks with disadvantage? I've got a plus 12. 
Should I just stay and just uh, take disadvantage on my two shots and just try to take one out real quick? Because it's a plus 12 to hit. Uh, and it's a D8 plus 6 damage, so I think that might be good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot. I'll just shoot the closest one. I get they're both close on me, but I'm gonna uh, focus fire on one of them. Uh, so here we go. This is gonna have disadvantage. So first roll. Is that a? It looks like a 20, 26, 25. Um, oh, and it would have been uh, 13 damage. Okay, I always have to pause for a second because if I roll too fast, it rolls on my uh, D&D Beyond instead of uh, roll 20. 14. Whoa, these things have a 19 armor class? I did not see that. Uh, so that one just goes right into the quicksand. Shot two. Oh. Yeah, shot two. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, both of my shots are going to miss. Um, what else do I got? Uh, gathered Swarm. As a bonus action, you can agitate the swarm for one minute. For the duration, some of the swarm clings to your weapons and follows your strikes when you attack. Once during each of your turns, when you hit a creature... I got to hit a creature for that. Um... Uh, I'm just looking at everything I've got. Like, do I have any bonus actions? Uh, what spell? Do I have any? Oof, this is gonna be rough. Um, okay. All right, it's their turn. Um. I'll just do their two rolls again real quick. Uh, so I'll add their modifier this time. It's a plus four. Ooh. Both are going to hit. Yes, that would negate it. Um, which I'm getting kind of... Okay, nine and eight. So I'm gonna take 17 more shocking damage because they both hit me. Um, hey guys, what should I do right here? Uh, surely this wasn't supposed to be a deadly fight right here, but with both of them on me and me being, I'm telling you, I'm not a, ooh, I'm kind of worried about being a ranger on this. Um, I might, I might have to burn. Um, uh, I could do oh I could pull into my bag of tricks and try to get out um, I could try to get out hopefully a dire wolf or something uh, <laughs> run to the nearest town that's what I was thinking uh, Sash uh, uh, fairy fire um, how much rain how much speed did they have because I think if I move they've got 50 feet of movement, so they would just be able to catch me. I'm gonna cast uh, Fairy Fire. And that way I can get rid of my disadvantage. So I'm gonna cast Fairy Fire on them. Uh, oh wait, am I though? Because Sash, if I do that, they make dexterity saving throws. Yeah, but then they'll get dexterity saving throws. And, um, oh, absorb elements would be good because, um, the spell captures some of the incoming energy less than you have resistance that, uh, until the start of my next turn. Uh, yeah, they'll have a plus nine to that deck saving throw.
Oof. Chat, it's usually not this rough this quick. <laughs> this is like a, uh... Ooh. All right, well, um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my uh, Gather Swarm for my bonus action so that for one minute I'll have a bunch of hummingbirds around me and if I hit something finally, um, I can deal an extra 1d6 force damage to that creature. Um, and, oh, um, oh, you know what? Yeah, that's true. Um, but one cool thing about Aarakocras and this swarm, uh, thing I've got, oh, this is going to be really nice and, uh, really cheap, um, but... I have got, uh, where do I see my movement at? Um, I see my walking speed. Where do I see my flying speed at? Uh, sorry guys, I'm looking for, I got a flying speed of 50. So I've got the same flying speed as them and I just activated my, um, my swarm, right? Well, while my swarm is activated, uh, my speed is increased by 10 feet, and I can take the disengage as a bonus, act, uh, bonus action. Um, unfortunately, I already used my bonus action to um, uh, do that. Can you downgrade an action to a bonus action? 5e. Um, I thought you could. Uh, you cannot downgrade your action to, uh, or your move to take a second bonus action. Dang it. Um, that sucks. So, yes. Next round, I will disengage and run. And I will be able to kite them because I will be faster than them. Unless they dash to me, which I don't really mind if they do. So we are not out of this, uh, we are not dead yet, everybody. Um, hey Joe, um, for now, since that was my bonus action to turn on my swarm, I again, yeah, I again am going to try to hit one with two of my attacks. Um, unfortunately they are still at disadvantage. 27 will hit it, now let's see if the second one would hit it. I really only need to roll a seven. Hey, and that 20. Look at that 32, that glorious, glorious 32. Everybody in chat, let me go ahead and get this giveaway started. Uh, there you go. Uh, that is actually going to hit with that 27. Only 10 piercing damage, though. Oh, plus a d6, though, because of my swarm. Uh, so that will be 14 points of damage to that thing. It's only got 22 HP, so... Uh, uh, that will be 8 points of HP left. All right, I'm gonna try to shoot it again. Uh, and hope for similar results on that. So far, so good. If this if this next roll is at, is at least the uh, 19 total, um, I think this thing is gonna be dead. Dang it, three points away. Ah. Uh. All right, all right. Um, well, it's their turn. They are going to uh, hopefully not both hit me again. A 
uh, Nat 1's definitely gonna miss me. Yes! Uh, so these dang lights are uh, just swarming around me. Cannot hit me. I am now gonna fly 60 feet away from them. And uh, use, d use my bonus action to disengage, that is, so they do not get opportunity attacks. And now, we're just gonna cheese it a little bit, because I've got 10 more speed than them. Oh, this is gonna be so nice, having two attacks without, um... Uh, your, the guys do as good as they do on other streams. Your rolls are horrible. I know! They're really bad. When I use the Google Dice Roller, they're always really, really good. But, uh, like, watch. I'm gonna do just a Google Dice Roller for fun. And I'll tell you what- tell you all what I get. I guarantee it's 19. Or 20. Okay, it was a 3. Never mind. Uh, disregard. Alright. Um. Oh, you know what? Let's see if they do go to invisible. They have to get a 6 on this. That one does not go invisible. We'll say that that's the one I've been shooting at. Neither of them go invisible. Uh, which is very, very good. But, the one I already hit once is about to get his ass sniped. Yes, um, that one, that light is never gonna, never gonna shine again. That, I just dimmed that light forever. Um, and just like, poofs. Turn my attention to the other one. Did I really miss it? Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, okay. Well, um, it can, it can start flying right at me. It is not going to get to me, though, but it might go invisible, which would throw a wrench into things. Does not go invisible. Okay. I feel like we have spent a lot of time on this one fight, and I am ready to... Oof, that's going to hit it. That one's not. Uh, but... So that is going to be only seven points of damage. That's not very good. Is that adding my... Um... Let me see something. I don't know for a fact that that is adding my bracers of archery, which give me plus two to damage rolls. Um, so uh, my dex is plus four, and it's a longbow plus two. So no, that's actually not adding my um, uh, bracers of archery for some reason. No, Zoltar, I'm about to kill him. Um, so that's actually nine points of damage, not seven. And then plus a d6 for my homing birds that are swarming this thing. Uh, 13 points of damage. This thing is over halfway dead. Whoa, that thing is uh, really close to being dead. Yeah, I lost a big chunk of my health after bragging about how much health I had. I need to quit bragging. Ah, oh, dang it. If I click it too fast, it rolls a giant dice on my D&D Beyond. Whoa, 31. Almost got another nat 20. Um, so that's gonna... Uh, I think that's gonna do it. I think this thing is definitely dead now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somebody give me, uh, yeah, so I'm probably gonna need that Supreme Healing Potion. We don't want this stream to end too early tonight. We've got almost two hours left. Honestly, um, I don't have a Gullible Gazette recording tonight, so I really could, uh, actually continue playing if I'm, like, not finished by 10 o'clock. Um, so, I killed the Wisp, and that kind of sucked, uh... That was pretty rough. Oh! Weaver did give me one! Yes! Uh, fantastic. I'm gonna need that, I think. Uh, let me go to 44. Uh, so, a Supreme Healing Potion. Thank you so much, Weaver. Uh, Supreme Healing Potion IV. Um... Let me see if I want to save that one for now. It is um, 10d4 plus 20. I think I do actually want to save that one, don't I? Yeah. 
I'm going to save that and use some of my lower level ones first. I will use a, a regular healing potion first, which is 2d4 plus 2. I've got four of those. Six. I'm going to drink two of those. And five. So I'm going to get 11 HP back for now. I think that supreme healing potion is going to uh, very much uh, save my butt. Okay. I'm still not full HP, but... I feel better knowing I've got that. Um, I, uh, Sash, I played one of these as a two player. I actually played one from this series with another player before because it has a scaling at the beginning. Um, that one was a level five adventure, but it said instead of playing level five, you could have two people be level threes. And uh, we did that and we failed. We died uh, very hard. We were not even close to the entry, uh, the ending. So um, I'm kind of nervous about these. Um, finally, the haunting lights are extinguished and the woods fall quiet. Looking ahead, you fancy you can see the entrance to Lady Del uh, Delanora's tomb. You moved uh, towards it, sure enough, in a clearing just uh, before a forested slope descends into a lowland forest. You see a large statue of a female warrior illuminated by the moonlight. You come closer. This must be Lady De uh, Delanora. She holds a long stone broadsword and her shield is embezzled with the emblem of Delanora House, a lion standing proudly before a grassy plain. A little way beyond the statue, you see a portal where a set of stairs leads down into the earth. This must be the entrance to the tomb. Taking a deep breath, you walk uh, to the entrance and descend the stairs, beginning your journey into the silent, dark <laughs> vault. Guys, this is when I'm not going to be able to um, cheese it with my movement speed, with my flying anymore. I got really lucky with the wisp, and I was just like in a big open forest, so I was able to just fly around wherever I wanted to. It's not going to be the case anymore. Um, okay. Yeah, Dark Vision would have been pretty cool, wouldn't it have? Um, I, I mean, I have torches. Um, patting down the well-made stone steps, a musty, sickening smell hits your nostrils. There is, n there is more than just decades-old death down here. That much is certain. Some evil lurks within this vault, and you are determined to root it out. You reach the bottom of the staircase and continue on deeper into the darkened vault. Page tw uh, entry 20. Finally, after a short distance, you reach a sturdy wooden door banded with metal. To check for traps, make an investigation or perception check. Uh, yes, I I will surely do that. Uh, my perception is plus six, so I will go with that. Wow, only a 12. Uh, thank you again, Weaver. Um, do you want me to use that advantage on that trap check, Weaver? I would feel bad if I re-roll and succeed and there's actually no traps on it. Um, but maybe. Um. Uh, okay, I'm gonna re-roll my perception. Oh no, it went down! <laughs> Weaver, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste, I'm not gonna waste your advantage on that. Cause watch, I guarantee, I bet there's not even anything here. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that to you, Weaver. Um, I will, I'm unsuccessful. Go to 30. You search the door and s all around it, but find nothing. Seeing nothing else for it, you try the door handle and find it open. You progress through the room beyond from which a strange light emanates. This room is empty apart. See, there was no traps even on that. So if I would have used Weaver's uh, roll to get advantage on that, that would have been so crappy uh, for that uh, paid advantage roll. Um, on the floor of this room are a selection of letters in common language glowing with the mystical green light. 
You examine the letters for some time, wondering what their significance might be. Then, to your alarm, you hear the door through which you entered the room slam shut behind you, and some larger mechanism within the wall shudder into life. Maybe cave, never mind. Uh, there is a sinister hiss and yellow gas jets into the room through small holes at the same time as the wall uh, begin to slowly slide inwards towards you. You search for an exit but find none. Just when you are thinking that this is surely the end, a hideous hollow voice booms around you coming from all directions. Um, you know what? Real quick, uh, real quick, I'm going to change something. Uh, I am my own disadvantage. I'm, uh, I'm not. A, I I don't get to play D and D a lot. Um, so when I do, I'm usually really bad at it. Uh, before I read that, I'm actually gonna pull up my voice changer so that I can at least like uh, give you guys at least something. This is the voice changer I use for uh, shitty cowboys. Oh. Looks like it might happen to me. It does indeed have an update. Uh, so while that's going, um, let's see who all has entered the giveaway so far. If you are watching right now and you have not yet, go ahead and type exclamation point giveaway because I'm about to give out some stickers in like 30 seconds here. Um, so I'll give one last heads up. And then it looks like we've got six entries into it. So uh, everyone's got some pretty good odds of winning some stickers. And even if you win some stickers tonight, uh, you are always eligible to win more stickers because I don't want to punish somebody for uh, watching a bunch of uh, streams. I want you to always be able to get in. Um, my mic might go out real quick while I change it to the voice modulator. Hello, can you all still hear me? Cool. Um, Do I sound like a big godly titan right now, or no? Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, let me go ahead and do that uh, giveaway real quick. Uh, all right. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see here. King, uh, good luck, everybody. Good luck on your stickers. Uh, Danny, you won some stickers. I don't think you've won any stickers yet. Um, so congrats. Uh, Tanya, by the way, your stickers are supposed to be there tomorrow, my tracking says. Um, and Zoltar, yours haven't shipped yet. I'm sorry. Uh, things have slowed down. Um, but yes, congratulations, Danny. You should uh, be getting them probably like a week or so. Uh, it seems like it's taken a long time for everything to ship from our shop because of COVID. Um, yeah, Tanya, it says um, on my tracking number Friday. You should get them tomorrow. All right. Let's continue now that I got my voice modulator on. Welcome, interloper. You have come to oust me from my new home, from the tomb of the warrior who destroyed me. I am no longer... Uh, I am longing to meet you. But first, you must learn my name. Touch the letters in the right combination to spell my name, which has six letters. There are only eight letters here, but there is only a moderate chance that you will be crushed to death. Probably the poison will get you first anyway. Good luck, my friend. Quickly, you glance down at the glowing letters on the floor and begin to touch them left to right. Well, no, I'm not going to touch them yet. Um, and begin touching them left to right, trying to combine them into a logical sounding name. History or religion check. Okay, I can do that. I was hoping I didn't have to like actually do it. Oh, they're both plus zero, everybody. Well, that's not going to do it. Nat one. Um, um, I'm tr I'm war. I'm trying to think if I would really get crushed to death death from missing it once or not. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Zoltar. I was debating on if I wanted to use my advantage from Weaver, and I think I will because I'm really worried that it will just, like, insta-kill me. I'm not sure if it will or not. So I'm going to try one more time. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, very good. Thank you so much, Weaver. You may have literally just saved my life in this adventure. So <laughs> thank you. Um... Uh, you work quickly trying to make a name that sounds suitably villainous. <laughs> you don't know why, but the letters just seem to jump out at you. Even though the name you have spelt is certainly one that you have heard before. It's, guys, it's Togzor. From the name of the adventure. Um, uh, and Togzor says, Yes, friend, that is my name. You may proceed deeper into the vault that I have claimed for my own. I hope we meet very soon. A chilling, hollow laugh rings around you. <laughs> the door ahead releases and swings open, revealing a room beyond, and you run for it, eager to escape this rapidly shrinking and crushing room. Glad to be out of the death trap of a room, you take a moment to recover your wits, clearing your lungs of the noxious poison that th uh, threatened to end your life. Then, when you are recovered, you survey your surroundings. This large rectangular room has three doors in the three walls. This large rectangular room has three doors and three walls. One to the south, door I just came in. One to the west, one to the east. The doors to your west and east look uh, markedly different from each other. The western door um, appears to have three different locks arranged in a line across the door each keyhole carved with an ornate design. The eastern door has a single lock that appears to be made of whitish, bone-colored material. And then, at the far northern end of the room, you catch sight of a tall mirror of an ornate wooden stand. There appears to be some sort of green mist swirling within the depths of the glass. Are we going to go check out the western door, the eastern door, or the mirror? Oh, somebody said mirror... <laughs> okay, I, I I look up and I see not the mirror, mirror, no mirror, mirror bad. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised that Tanya saw me no mirror because Tanya, I think you were the one that told me to touch the glowing purple um, thing in that one adventure. That or you were the one that told me not to and I did touch it and I just took a bunch of damage. East. East sound good to everybody? East is the one that only has one lock on it. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, Danny, either you or Tanya did tell me to touch that. Um, so... Yeah, I like there only being one lock. Uh, I'll go to east. Entry 11. You walk down to the eastern door and inspect it closely. The key plate appears to be made of bone of some kind. Do I possess the bone key? I do not. Um, do I try to pick it or do I go to the western door? Uh, I will say, I mean, I don't, I'm not like good at picking locks, so I don't know that uh, Rufus would want to, okay, yeah, I'm going to go west. I'm going to go west because I feel like if I try to pick that, I'm just dead. Um, you approach the door to the western wall. Coming close, you see that there are three ornate keyholes arranged in a row on the door, and hanging on a hook next to the door is a large key. You inspect the three keyholes within closely. The first key sits within the roaring mouth of a lion, intricately engraved in the metal. Next, the large uh, a bear mouth. And finally, the snarling mouth of a wolf. The key is meant to be placed in one of these keys. I mean, it's obviously the lion, right? Hey, Paul. Hey, is that Paul? Paul? Is that Paul, the author of here? 
Um, I mean, it, it's it's the lion's mouth, right? That the key goes into, because she is her uh, family crest is the uh, the lion. Paul, isn't it like? Well, I guess Sash is in here too. I think you guys are both in Europe. I think you're in Europe, Paul. Am I? I might be totally wrong. Maybe not. I'm gonna touch the lion's mouth because that's the um, uh, the lady's uh, house crest. Go to 25. Oh, Paul's in New Zealand. You were you're like over there. <laughs> that's pretty close, right? Uh, 25. Carefully inserting the large key into the lion's mouth, you turn in, breathe a sigh of relief when you uh, realize the lock moves and releases. Yes, you remembered the statue of Lady Delanora from outside the tomb and the coat of arms displayed on her shield, a lion on a grassy plain. But you do not waste too much time congratulating yourself. You have already had a glimpse into how dangerous this, trip, this crypt is. Yes. Um, and you stealing your nerves, you proceed into the passage beyond. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul, the, um, uh, oh, Sash, that was really quick. Was Did a bot sneak in here, Sash? You got him real quick. Um, yeah, I, Adam does need a globe. Um, but, Paul, those two Will-O-Wisp at the very beginning, was pretty rough. <laughs> they, uh, they embarrassed me a little bit. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, 31. You enter a smooth stone passage and follow it a short while before it turns north. You see a light coming from ahead. What could be up there? Cautiously, you edge your way forward, and what you see causes you to rub your eyes in astonishment. Um. Okay, so this is a zombie. I gotta get my voice modulator on right. Um. They have, they've got zombie, you guys. You got, I mean, it might not sound like a zombie. I think I tried this and Sean said it sounds really funny. I can't hear this, by the way. So you all tell me how bad this sounds. But it did, I did see that this thing has rotten skin. So, uh, this thing is going to say to me. Come have a seat with me. Beckoning you toward the room is a uh, figure seated at the table, a humanoid figure with rotting skin and hollow cheekbones, and he is currently shuffling a deck of cards. You have heard stories of creatures such as this and think that it is a lich. Paul, I really hope this isn't a lich. I gotta say right now, I really hope this isn't a lich. Um, did that sound like a lich voice? It sounded... Okay. Um... I will not hurt you, friend. No, that is not my job. No, my only purpose here is to play a few hands of cards with you. Wordlessly, you sit down opposite the lich and watch his bony fingers shuffle a deck of cards. The game is very simple. There are six creatures in the deck. Minions of the grave, like myself. At this, the lich gives a chuckle, as if enjoying a personal joke. <laughs> we will draw cards, each taking a card from the top of the deck. If your card is more powerful than mine, then you win the round. You will play, play three rounds. At the end of the three rounds, there will either be a winner or a loser. You clear your throat, trying to uh, stop your voice from shaking with fear. And what's going to happen to the loser, you ask? Ah, oh, that's a surprise. Now let's begin. Um, the, all right, let me read this. The numbers in the bracket are the challenge rating of each of the monster cards. To play around, roll a d6 twice. Once for me, once for the lich. If the lich produces a higher challenging monster, the lich wins that round. Best of three. If you lose, note down the winning card in the final round. If you win, note down the uh, losing card in the final round. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how Sash is uh, banning those bots so quick, but Sash, good, good job, good job. All right. Um, I think I understand this. Let me just. I'm just gonna roll two d sixes real quick. Mine's gonna be first. Lich is gonna be second. 
Oh, I rolled a six. That might be good. And Lich rolled a two. Uh, so I can see that I rolled a Wrath Spider. Wraith Spider? And they rolled a zombie. So I won that round. Um, and now, best two out of three. It's going to be me first again, and then the Lich. My turn. Ooh, I rolled a one. Uh, okay, one to one. Um, well, here we go. Winner of this round is going to win. Uh, I'm not going to change it. I'm first. Got a four. That's pretty good. Here's the liches. No! <laughs> no! No! Oh, no. Uh, so what's it say? It says, uh, if you lose, note down the winning card in the final round. The, the winning card in the final round is Wraith Spider. I'm going to write that down in my notes. Uh, Paul's trolling me now. Paul said that couldn't have gone better. better. I know that I am... Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I'm definitely fighting a Wraith Spider, uh, which is challenge rating 3, which seems low for level 10, but you got to remember, I'm by myself. So... <sighs> Go to entry seven. You played well, my friend. And now you shall reap the rewards of your victory. I didn't win, though. Wait, I didn't win, though. Uh, the lich throws his head back and laughs. And you can see the form crumpling into dust before your eyes. Then you watch open mouth as the walls fall away. And you are in a huge arena with frozen seats ascending as high as you can see. Looking down at you are hordes of undead cheering and clapping, and you clap your hands um, to cover your ears to try and block out the horrible sound. They all wait for the show to begin. Eyes dangling from uh, stalks and flesh hanging loose on brittle bones. Find the card you noted down in the left column on the table below, then reference that against the appropriate column de uh, depending on whether you won or lost. This will determine what undead foe or foes you will be facing in this nightmarish arena. Wraith Spider. I will fight two Wraith Spiders. <laughs> so you all were wrong. I'm not fighting a Wraith Spider. I fight two Wraith Spiders. Um, okay. Uh, the following are notes for combat with skeletons, zombies, shadow, specter, and ghoul. For the Wraith Spider, use your combat sheet found below. Use their combat sheet found below. Um, okay. Uh, they're trying to flank me. Uh, every round, roll a d20. On a roll above 12, a piece of rotting gore comes flying at you. Make a dc 12 saving throw. Uh, or I'm going to hit be hit by it and take one. Oof. Okay. Alright. Paul. You turd. Uh, so I can get rid of that map. Uh, this is going to be the undead arena. Uh, I, uh, so Paul, I did take max HP, which is cool. Um, I did not, I, w I almost bought, uh, healing potions, but instead I went ahead and I, um, I spent my last of my money on a bag of tricks instead. Um, but I did see that I got four healing potions, uh, so, but I've already used two, but, uh, somebody donated, uh, Weber donated money for me to get a Supreme Healing Potion, so, I think I'm, um, gonna need that. If you run out of Healing Potions, I'm gonna say I told I almost bought ten Healing Potions. Instead of my third magic item, I was gonna buy ten Healing Potions. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, hey Paul, what's the, uh, what's the ceiling like in this room? Because I am an Aarakocra. Um, but I'm sure these spiders probably have a range attack, don't they? Let me 
Let me let me look at these stat blocks real quick. 14 armor class. That's not bad. Um, luckily, I've got a plus 12 to hit. Uh, 57 health points. Oh, but they're resistant to non-silvered stuff. Um, uh, they can web. 30, 60 foot range. Uh, Alright, yeah, see you, Paul. Uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. Um, life drain. I think I am going to fly up. Right? I mean, this thing's probably got a big ceiling, right? It says the uh, the stands go as high as the... Do you guys think that's too cheaty? Do you guys think that's cheating if I fly up? I'll let you all be the uh, judges of that. Um, yeah, because I feel like I could just fly up and... Um... <laughs> See ya, Paul. Um, let me read that again real quick. Uh, I would like to fly really far away from them. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, let me go ahead and roll initiative. I will do mine first. I cannot believe I got the hardest combat there is, by the way. 21. Not bad. I think I'm going to beat them unless they've got a plus... Yes. Okay. So I get to go first. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, first off, I am going to fly real high um, up to the ceiling. Okay. Zoltar, I like the idea of 50 foot ceilings because that still gives them a chance at webbing me. And if they webbed me, I think I would fall. So I think that's how we can kind of balance it out. So it's not super cheese. Um, can I see at the moment? Uh, yeah, I think this actually, so, I mean, I got torches. I could just drop my torch and just keep it lit lighting the floor up. Uh, but even, even without that, um, I've got it pulled up on a different sheet that you guys can't see right now. I'm trying to scroll through and find the spot. Uh, will the wisp Here we go. Uh, Undead Arena. Um, it doesn't say if there's light or not in here. But it says, like, people are watching this. I would assume there'd be light in here. Um, but either way, I'll... I'll, I'm gonna drop my uh, I'll drop my torch on the floor and just like let it just chill um, okay so I get to go first so let's play this smart you guys um, I've only got one more gathered swarm I don't think I want to use that in this situation I've got a lot of spells left, by the way. Should I Hunter's Mark one of the spiders? I think I should. That is a bonus action. I definitely think I should if it's a bonus action, right? Or should I Conjure Animals? Okay, okay. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Alright, I will indeed... Um, Hunter's Mark. I still got three more first level spell slots. I'm going to Hunter's Mark the spider I'm going for. Um, I can see within range until the spell ends. Uh, you deal an additional 1d6 damage to the target whenever I hit. And I have an advantage on perception checks and survival checks to find it. If it drops a C or HP, I can move it to another target. Okay. 
from up here. I think now that I use that bonus action, I'm just gonna try to snipe it twice with my longbow. I've got 150 foot range, I can get it. 19, that is gonna hit. And I'm gonna add, it's not adding my bracers of archery damage. So that's plus two and then I'll roll my uh, D6 bonus damage. But maybe it's gonna hit again, we'll see. 14, 14's gonna hit. Oh, I kind of feel oh, I kind of feel bad for this thing because that is going to be a total of twelve plus fourteen. That is uh, twenty six plus two d six plus ten. Um, twelve plus fourteen. 26, 36 damage to that thing. Um, yes, I like it. Uh, I like it a lot. Okay, let me uh, track that thing's HP real quick. Yeah, if I get hit with that web, I'm pretty, I'm like, I'm gonna be really screwed if I get hit with that web. Um, they've got 57 HP, so minus 26. Ooh, that's not as much damage as I hope. No, wait, it's not 26. It's, uh... 36. 36. Uh, 57 plus 26. 27 minus 36 is... 8? Um, 21? I think 21. We'll put 21 as a placeholder, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But now... Spider's turn. This is what I'm really, really worried about. But they've got disadvantage with their web. Because it's uh, 30 foot, 60 foot. So they are going to have disadvantage with this. Okay. plus four. Oh, okay. I forgot disadvantage though. Oh, because that would definitely hit. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna hit me. Oh no. First one's gonna hit me. Or do I, uh, range went plus four to hit. Um, the target is strained by webbing. Webbing. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, so that's going to be 5d6 of damage. Me being up so high. 19 points of damage. Guys, why didn't I drink all my health potions? Why didn't I drink all those little health potions? I collapsed down to the ground. Webbed. Oh, guys, what can I do? What can I do? How can we, how can we save this? Um, the other one's gonna run up to me and try to bite me. Oh. Oof. I, Paul might be right. I might not make it out of this combat. Um. Forty-eight. And I have to make a constitution saving throw. Ooh. That's going to be 5d8 since it was a crit. 24 points of damage, and I have to make a constitution saving throw, or my health is reduced by that much. Oh, good thing I saved at least. How much damage was that, though? That was going to be 24 points of damage. I'm not looking super great. I've got my supreme health potion, though. Thank you, Weaver. Um... Okay, it's my turn.
<laughs> um, I don't need another yet. Um, what do you all think about the house rule of drinking a potion as one bonus action? Because if so, I'm going to drink my supreme healing potion and try really hard not to die. Uh, yeah, I've always just thought that using an action to drink a potion is kind of silly, but I mean... Okay, okay. Uh, what's gaseous form do? Okay, so I am going to use a um, uh, a bonus action to down a supreme. Uh, let me just down that real quick. Forty-three points of healing. Uh, did that do all of it? Yes. Weaver, for the second time, you may have just saved this stream. Okay, now for the bonus, everybody. Gaseous form would get me out of the web. Uh, so that was my bonus action. Yeah, what can I do for my action? to not die right here. Should I reach into my bag of tricks? Should I conjure animals? Maybe conjuring animals would um, buy me time. You know, the spiders would uh, have to focus on the animals instead of me. But, e but even when I'm restrained, I could still do that, right? I could still cast conjure animals so I'm kind of I'm looking at conjure, an, conjure animals right now and I could get four beasts with challenge rating of one half or lower or two beasts of challenge rating one or lower um, I'm really going to lean on you all to help me not die here. One of the spiders is pretty close to dying. I think we can do this now that I had that supreme healing potion. Without that supreme healing potion, I don't think I could have done this. But with that, I think we can do it. I am going to just... I'm going to need help, but I think we can do it. Uh, so it sounds like my choices are I'm restrained in web. I could like try to break out of the web, but that seems like it's not going to buy me a lot of time because then if I break out and I fly up to the ceiling, next turn they might web me again, even with disadvantage. That one webbed me with disadvantage. Um, or I could try to summon some animals while I'm webbed up. Uh, or I could turn into gaseous form and guarantee I break out. I really don't no, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at some different animals I could conjure just in case. Uh, if I went with four beasts of one half or lower, I could summon four crocodiles, four apes. That could be pretty fun. Four giant goats. Oh no, four giant wasp. I would want flying stuff. I think. Actually, what is a spider's uh, greatest enemy? Swarm of insect. I don't think I could summon a swarm. Or I could summon two brown bears, two dire wolves, two giant eagles. Oh, that would be cool. 
A boot. I should summon two giant boots. <laughs> Um, I kind of like summoning two giant eagles because we could all fly around together. Two ice spiders? Ah. Uh, you all help me out, you guys. Help me out. I really have no idea how to how to beat these things. Or do I want four enemies? Or do I want to conjure four things? See, the eagles and ice spiders, I can only summon two, though. And I'm kind of worried about these spiders just killing them in one go, each of them. But if I had four, it would have to take them more turns to kill all four of them. But then obviously they're going to be weaker creatures. I could do giant wasps. Oh, they're really bad. 12 armor class and only 13 HP. Um, or I could do... I could do eight wolves. That's going to take them some time to kill all eight wolves. Okay. But me being restrained. Uh, let me see if that means that I have disadvantage or if I can't even attack at all. Restrained. Uh, my speed is zero. Attack rolls against me have an advantage, and I have disadvantage. Um, the wolves are attack. I think this is. I think this is like a, a rough fight, right? I think this is a bad one. Um. So this is going to be a little hard to track uh, the combat for this. Uh, because it's so hard to track the combat, um, I don't really want to do the eight wolves because I, th I I think that's the best case. Like, I think that's the, the best option for me. I think that's what's going to, like, do the most damage and give me the most uh, meat shields. But... Man, that would be a, a, a big pain to uh, um, keep track of eight. Um, you know what? I'll do it. Screw it. I'm going to summon eight wolves. Yeah, I'm going to summon eight wolves. Um, so let me mark that spell slot down. That's my third level spell slot. I've only had got two of those, but I now have uh, eight wolves that are summoned. Uh, the summoned creatures are friendly to you and your companions. Roll initiative for the summoned creatures. Uh, oh, okay, let me roll initiative real quick. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so that is my full turn. Yeah, I'll do that. That's my full turn. Um... Well, shoot, what was my initiative? My initiative was 21. The spiders got 12. So that was my turn. So we'll have the wolves go now. 
Uh, so wolves time. Um, roll eight. D twenty. So those are five, eleven, nineteen, twelve, eighteen, six, five, and fourteen. Uh, we're looking for a fourteen armor class, and their two hit is. Uh, well, they actually have advantage on all their attacks with at least one ally within five feet. <laughs> um, so it's plus four, though. Um, oh, goodness. This is going to be rough to track, but holy cow, these wolves are about to tear up these spiders. Um, what all did that roll? And those are all plus four. Let me see if any of them missed, because if so, they get to roll... Um, advantage. Um, armor class is 14. So only one, two, three. Only three of them missed. I'm going to roll three more. Wow. Only one wolf is going to miss. Oh, you're right. Yeah, some can crit. I'll do 5D. Okay, no crits. No crits. Um, so only one wolf's going to miss out of seven. Oof. Oof. Okay. Um, this is going to be rough. I think, I think we won. <laughs> um, so one spider only has... 21 HP left. So let me roll a couple bites against that. Seven. Ten. Five. So that one's dead. And then the other four wolves will turn and focus on the other spider. Oh, I could have had, yeah, I could have had one of them attack the web and set me free. You're right, Zoltar. Dang it. See, I need to be a player more often so I think of stuff like that. Um, so it's the first three that killed that one. And then it's the last four. Five plus, so 12, 20, 29 damage. Um... Um, do you all care if I have one of those wolves? I'll even use this. I'll use the max damage wolf. I'll subtract it from the damage to the spider, and I'll have it free me from the web instead. I think that, I think that's, I think that'd be okay. I think that'd be fair. Um, I would, because it only needs five damage to free the web. I will take away the most damaging one to be as most fair as possible. Uh, so the first spider just got gobbled up. Second spider is going to take um, 5, 7, 12, and then 20. So uh, it's got 37 HP left. I am free. It is now spider's turn. What do you guys think a big spider would attack? Uh, does this say... Um I mean, I think it would just, um, I feel, I'm picturing like me being surrounded by the wolves. Um, uh, yeah, I think like, I think like the wolves would be like making a barricade around me. I'll have it try to hit one wolf, um, but. It's gonna hit that wolf and that wolf is probably uh, super dead. Yeah, they don't have a lot of HP, do they? Yep. Uh, that one wolf is super dead. But then, it's my turn. I'm just gonna, I, I'm actually very angry at this, uh, spider. I'm gonna shoot it twice really hard with my longbow. Um, I no longer have uh, focus fire on it or uh, hunter's mark because I summoned the wolves. 
Uh, Power Helm, I am still alive because I summoned eight wolves. Um, so, uh, 20 is going to hit it. That's 14 plus 2 damage, so 16 damage. Yes! Ooh, that crit had such bad damage, though. Uh, so that's going to be 16 plus 12. 28 points of damage. Oh, this thing's got uh, 9 HP left. No power helm. I got really close to using the bag of tricks. Um, but instead, I needed more meat shield. So I used my contra animals because I really got close to dying on this one uh, but now I have got seven um, dire wolves or just regular wolves uh, that one two three are gonna miss maybe nope um, two are gonna miss I think this thing's dead um, so five are gonna hit no matter what. And their damage is... Yeah. Oh yeah, they just gnaw this thing apart. Uh, and they chew up this last spider. How long does uh, Conjure Animals last, by the way? Um, it lasts for one hour. I've got seven little wolves with me. Oh, nice. What happens when I eat these? As you slay the last of your enemies, the scene around you falls away. The arena and all of its inhabitants dissolve into smoke, and the noise fades to nothing. As you come to your wits, you see that you stand in a simple room with a stone table at its center. There is nothing here but a passage leading off to the north. Slowly, silently, you make your way down it. It travels for some time before turning east. You follow this near-completed darkness until you reach its dead end. It occurs to you that the voice has not spoken for some time. Perhaps you are beyond its vision. You search the walls and you think that this and soon you find it a secret door. Not very well concealed. Does this lead to the main tomb of Lady Delornia? Uh, De uh, you have a strong instinct, instinct that it does as these types of uh, crypts are generally not very large. Soon you find the mechanism that opens the door and you trigger it smoothly and almost silently door slides open. You enter a large uh, rectangular room which must be the main tomb of Lady Delanora. Uh, De um, on an altar against the north wall you see a large statue of a lion standing guard. The lion has a single eye, an emerald, but the other eye appears to be missing. In the center of the room is a set of stairs going down, probably to the tomb proper. No doubt the sarcophagus of Lady Delanora is down there. Then you hear a horrific roar from below which shakes the walls and the frustration is palpable. Somehow, you have reached the lair of Tagazor without the fiend having noticed that you have caught him off guard. You hear, some, uh, you hear the sound of some hideous shambling beast approaching. Go to Tagazort's uh, combat sheet. You may ready an attack. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Weaver. Uh, Gozer? Gozer? Like uh, Ghostbusters? Maybe. I'll call it Gozer from now on. You may ready an attack. Alternatively, if you have the code word Emerald, I don't. Place tokens. Um, let me get this right map up. Thank you so much, Weaver. I think with your help, and I think we're going to survive it.
go. So I still have um, seven wolves with me. Location one is the eastern entrance. Location two is by the western wall. Every time Gozer attacks, roll a d6 to determine how he attacks. One to three is a bite. Four to six is eye ray. Um. Okay, this is this is it. You got. Oh, it's a beholder. Oh, cool. Oh. I'm excited. Is this? Uh, I think this is like the boss, which is good because it is 9/11 already. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let me roll my initiative and then its initiative and my wolf's initiative. I'm going to roll mine first. My initiative is... I can't see where that went, so I hope it's good. Wolf initiative. Oh, 16 and 20, not bad. And then uh, Gozer initiative. Oh no, a nat 20, and then it's got a plus. Oh, it's got a minus one. Oh wait, did I beat it? Uh, wolves beat it. Uh, wolves are gonna beat the initiative. Um, cool. I get to ready and attack though. Um, so, is obviously my ready attack is gonna be my bow. That's my go-to. That is Rufus's number one. So as soon as this thing comes up this path, I am just gonna hopefully. Is that a 19 or a 10? I cannot see it yet. That is a 19. Goes is about to get one of his eyes shot out. Uh, ooh, he's got 95 HP. He's He's got as much HP as I do. Yep, yeah, now I'm going to want to use my bag of tricks. I did take sharpshooter, and I should have used sharpshooter, shouldn't I have? Um, 93 minus 11, so 82. Yeah, I do have sharpshooter feet. What exactly does that do again? I haven't been using that. Sharpshooter. Um, attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage, and then I can do the minus five to attack roll and add plus ten damage. I sh I'll start doing that. I'll start. I'll, I'll do that my next attack. Hopefully, um, the wolves get to go. Okay, I'm gonna have the seven wolves swarm this thing. And uh, them swarming it, uh, they would all have, I'm gonna keep the dice in the same spot. So like if that nat one that's in front, I'm gonna have whichever is in that same dice spot be its advantage roll. Um, and they all have a plus four. So that's gonna be a miss, a hit, a hit, a hit, a hit. A miss, a miss. So that's one, two, three, four. Only four are gonna hit on that. Uh, nine plus five plus seven plus six. Uh, so that is going to be a 12 plus a nine, uh, 21, 20. Uh, 26, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, 20, uh, 27, 27, okay, 82 minus 27 is 62, 55, 55 HP, this thing is looking bad already after all my wolves, conjure animals, um, <coughs> I know that doing the lower challenge rating animals, but more of them, is like 
definitely uh, more powerful than doing the higher level ones, but um, but it's Gozer's turn, and I think Gozer's actually got some good shit. Um, so it says, uh, roll a d6 to determine how he attacks. A one. What's a one gonna do for me? That's true, Zoltar. If they have an AoE, they will just wipe out them, but, um. Paralyzing Ray. The targeted creature must succeed on DC 14 Constitution saving throw. Be paralyzed for two rounds. Oof. I think it only makes sense that really it would try to hit me with the Ray. This thing's got a 12 intelligence, so it's above average intelligence. I think it would know that I'm like controlling these wolves. Okay. I'll go for a constitution saving throw. Saving throw. Wish me luck. Oof. Uh, that is a big fail right there. Oh, wait. <laughs> Got an advantage from Weaver. I'm using it right there. No. Oof. Still failed. Still failed. I think I think we'll be good though. I think we'll be good with the wolves. And with me having a supreme healing potion in my back pocket still. Don't you worry, Weaver. I I swear I think you won this adventure for us, Weaver, because I still have that supreme healing potion and the wolves are going to go next. Well, actually it's my turn now. I'm going to try to unparalyze Wow, six. Um, it says the target can repeat the saving throw at the end of its turns. Okay, I'm still paralyzed. Uh, I know, but this is only a dice roll I can like roll and like everyone can see it, and I so I can't cheat. Uh, but now it's Wolf's turn. There are still seven wolves. That is going to be, and that's all with advantage since they're surrounding it. Um, I could do that. That would be cool. Uh, they all have a plus four. So that is going to be one miss, two misses. Only two miss. So that's going to be five hits. Wow, look at that. They're all, are they all naturals except for, uh, you know, nat successes. Um, so it's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna get out my calculator for this. So that is six plus nine plus four plus six plus seven, 32 damage and this thing had 55 HP. So 55 minus 32 equals 23. This thing has 23 HP left. Okay. It is, um, Gozer turn again. Gozer, what's Gozer gonna do? Four, what's a four? A four is going to be disintegration ray. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It's a deck save. I instantly fail on the deck save. I'm instantly gonna fail, but. Oh wait, roll a d8 to determine the target? I. Okay, so look, my HP. I, I'm good. I'm good, you guys. I'm good, you guys. My HP is 95. So even if somehow he rolled all max damage, I would not die. So I'll 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 let I, we already established that like he knows he's smart enough to know like I'm controlling these wolves. So he's gonna attack me. 
Uh, he's gonna instantly hit me, but I won't insta die. Is it 10d8 or 8d10? Uh, 10d8. 44 force damage to me. That's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt bad, so I'm down to 51 HP. I'm still, I'm good. I'm still okay. Okay. It's Wolf's turn. Actually, wait, um, it's my turn. I'm gonna try to un, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to flex real hard to get unparalyzed. Um. Oh, <laughs> nat 20, nice. I am unparalyzed. Unfortunately, that is the end of my turn. Um, that is the end of my turn. Wolf, it's Wolf, Wolf O'Clock. Uh, the giveaways are just for the first nat 20 of the night. Oh, I see a uh, a nap, right, uh, a crit right there. Um, so it's gonna be one miss, two misses. There are two misses, but a crit. Um, so that's gonna be five hits. Uh, so I'll add a I'll add a D four to that too. I really think okay, net one. I really think these wolves might have uh, won it. Um, six plus six plus seven plus nine plus seven plus one. Uh, plus, yeah. Uh, so this thing had 23 HP left. So these wolves just swarming it are going to chew it to pieces. It I literally was paralyzed that entire fight and it was these wolves that just did it for me. If victorious go to 46. Um real quick before I go to 46, I am going to down that supreme healing potion. Um, it didn't work. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, here we go. 49 health points. So, uh, if we were playing this just legit, just solo playing myself, I probably really would have lost this. Uh, but luckily, since we're doing a stream and we have ways to donate to give supreme healing potions and advantages, luckily, um, we have been good so far. Uh, so where was I going? 46. You have defeated the mighty, mighty Gozer. You take some time to catch your breath, nearly spent from the high-pitched battle. Uh, leaving the tomb, you return to the wood, wood home and deliver the good news to Lord Brian, who is overjoyed. You have rid us of this evil curse. Woodhome shall prosper again, and your name shall be written into the histories. Lord Brian delivers that uh, 1,500 gold and begs me to stay in Woodhelm. As the adventure calls, shouldering the pack, which gained... Uh, I continue on. I did it! Well, we did it. I didn't do it. Um, wow. Whoa. Uh, so, uh, a couple things. Um, we've got a half hour left. So if you all want to hang out, we will make my next character for the next adventure. Uh, that's what we did last time. And I had a lot of fun doing that. And I would like to do it again this time. Uh, so, yes, thank you, Weaver. <laughs> 
<laughs> Paul's gonna be so mad that I survived because the <laughs> Weaver gave me two supreme healing potions and like two or three advantages. Um, uh, but that's fine. It's more, it's more exciting and it's more fulfilling if on the streams we actually finish the adventure. It would have been pretty, um, you know, disappointing if I would have just died in that arena and then you all didn't get to see the end of this adventure. So, um, so yeah, uh, let us create my next, uh, my next character for next week's, uh, oh, that reminds me. There will be no, uh, yeah, the whisper the hardest part, I think. Uh, those wisps really almost did me in. Um, but there will be no solo rolling next week because I will actually be hiking in, uh, out of town. Um, so it will be the first solo adventure, uh, solo rolling that we missed, which is, uh, unfortunate. But, uh, I will be taking some much needed, uh, time off. Uh, I will not be doing any editing or any streaming or anything, and we will just be kind of hiking in the woods and things like that. Uh, but we can still tonight um, create this next character. Let me um, let me pull up D and D Beyond. Yes, you can see all my characters. So first and foremost, um, let's, okay, so I can put up polls, uh, next, next race, um, how about we try to get it down to like four for my next race, um, dwarf, dragonborn, uh, Genasi, I haven't been any of those three on solo rolling, so I'm cool with being any of those three. Uh, let's try to get a fourth one so that I can have four on the pole and I'll start in the cobalt. Okay, so it is going to be between Dwarf, Dragonborn, Genasi, Oh, bald. And I'll put Noel on there too. Alright. Go ahead and uh, you type in um, exclamation point vote space zero for dwarf, one for dragonborn, two for genasi, three for kobold, and four for Noel. I will be right back, everybody, while you all vote.
Okay. So, ooh, uh, it looks like Dwarf won that one. All right, so we will be a dwarf. Um, uh, either a hill dwarf or a mountain dwarf. Let's do let's do the class. Let's pick the class, and then we'll pick the. Uh, I usually don't like uh, min maxing. My uh, I usually will pick um, my class first, and then a race that I think would be cool. And I try not to min max, but for these solo adventurers, I actually do kind of need a min max so that I don't die. Um, so let's see who we are going to, um, be next. Um, what are some options y'all want for, um, uh, class? I have been a cleric, ranger, and barbarian. So anything besides those three, please. And we'll try to get four of them. Rogue, Warlock, so I'll add, um, I'll add, uh, Rogue, oh wait, um, uh, Rogue, Warlock, Is it just going to be between uh, Rogue and Warlock, maybe? Um, which would be fine. We could do that. Um, those are the only two I'm seeing, so I'm going to go ahead and s I'm going to go ahead and start the poll just because. Uh, but it's between Rogue and Warlock, so zero for Rogue, one for Warlock. And I'm a dwarf. Um, so hill dwarves get plus two Constitution. Mountain dwarves get plus two. Oh, wait, 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 um. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be a warlock right there. Okay, uh, that's going to be a, a, a hill gets extra wisdom. Uh, but warlocks need charisma, right? Um, uh, hill dwarf details page. Um, so see, it seems like uh, hill dwarves get uh, wisdom plus one. Mountain dwarves get strength plus two. Um, there's also gray dwarf, which is strength. Um, what do you guys think? I don't. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's no charisma. Uh, so do I want more wisdom? I don't think I do, right? Maybe I'll keep strength and maybe I could be, um, if I did, if I did, uh, Mountain Dwarf, maybe I could be like a Hexblade Warlock and be like a melee Warlock. That could be fun. Hill? Uh, so Hill gives me, um, oh, Hill does give me, oh no, yeah, um, I know, yeah, it's not a very good idea as solo, is it? Um, okay. Uh, okay, let's do another poll real quick. Uh, hill or mountain? We'll just make this a real quick one. Yeah, do they both give extra health, or is it just... Oh, it is just the, uh... It is just the hill that gives the extra health. I do like that extra health. Okay, uh, hill definitely won that. They've got three already. Uh, okay, so we will be a hill dwarf. Cool. Oh, where'd my character go? So we are going to be a Hill Dwarf Warlock. Where is Dwarf at? Uh, uh, tool. 
other uh, other brewer's tool. Warlock. And we are going to... I'm going to make it a level 3. I haven't picked my next solo adventure yet. So I don't know what level I will be. But I want to at least pick a level 3 so that we can pick our next patri uh, our patron. Uh, so we've got Archfey, Celestial, Fiend, The Great Old One, or Hexblade. Hmm. I really don't know, like, what... They all give some stuff. I don't know. Fiend? The Fiend? Starting level one, uh, you gain temporary hit, po hit points whenever I kill somebody, so that could that would be pretty cool. Um, burning hands and command. Great old ones, probably always cool. Um, yeah, I don't. If we're like min maxing. Uh, Hideous laughter. Cthulhu. Uh, let's do this. Uh, um, this will probably be the last. Celestial Hexblade. Okay, so right now it's one to one, great old one and fiend. So we need uh, one more vote, one or the other. Oh, two for fiend. Oh, it's gonna be a close race. I'll give it to. I'll give it five, four, three, two, one. We will be the fiend. Sorry, Tanya, you might have to tune in a couple down the line, see if I can ever be a uh, Cthulhu dwarf. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. Uh, I do think Fiend might be uh, better for... I'll have to like actually look at these, because I don't think we can really do like a poll for these, because there's so many of them. Um, but I'll... I'll I'll probably try to like look up like the best of these and to pick um, to try to build my class the best I can because I do worry about dying. Uh, that would be cool, dwarf beard, but it's tentacles. Um, so everybody, uh, I will uh, in Discord. We'll we'll name this guy in Discord, uh, the Sil Dwarf. Um, but everybody, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. It was a lot of fun. I'm very excited we uh, won. Thank you, Weaver, for uh, pretty much winning it. Real quick, I, I was going to look. I don't remember where it was, but I was going to look back and see what happened if I would have failed that name puzzle. Um, because I think if I would have failed that name puzzle, I would have just been squished or poisoned and died. Uh, so I think you saved me like three times over. Uh, so thank you so much, Weaver. Thank you all for playing and watching. Um, seriously, like, we're like our stream is at the point where every like additional viewer for each stream means a lot to us. Uh, it means a lot to our statistics, our viewership. Uh, the more people that are watching a stream, when somebody searches like Dungeons and Dragons streams, we are ranked higher. If we have like one additional viewer can really make or break us so uh seriously thank you all for watching um i know this stream looks like like a a billboard down there with halfway to heroes one shot onslaught roll for weird dice talk the tournament of tokens uh, but those are all things you all should check out if you haven't yet um uh, we were on the wizards of the coast uh podcast of frost maiden 
event, which was really cool. Um, so that episode is going to be dropping on our One Shot Onslaught adventure, uh, podcast feed the 25th. Um, but until then, you can go ahead and go to the Dungeon Delve uh, podcast feed right now and download it and listen to it. And then you could give them a five-star rating and review. And you can give them a five-star rating and review and say, I found this show because of One Shot Onslaught and I loved their episode. And then maybe we'll get invited back to more events like that because that event was amazing. Um, yeah, Zoltar, that's one of my favorite One Shot Onslaught episodes in a really long time. Uh, so on the 25th, we'll be dropping that on um, our One Shot Onslaught feed. Uh, Barry will probably be coming into One Shot Onslaught like every now and then whenever it works for his schedule. Um, the thing is, like all of us being adults and most of us having kids, actually... All, uh, all of us but Johnny on Halfway to Heroes and on One Shot Onslaught all have like kids and stuff. Um, so Barry sometimes can't make it to our One Shot Onslaught uh, timing. So, but he is planning on popping in and out with Devlin um, every once in a while. Uh, I do want us to uh, get hit level twenty by like January, February ish of twenty twenty one. And then after we hit level 20, we are going to start new level 1 characters on One Shot Onslaught. Um, go check out all the shows on Majestic Goose uh, Network. Uh, you can go to MajesticGoose.com and find all of our shows right there. And also a really, really cool merchandise shop. Um, we've got like amazing merch. And I'm not just saying that. We really do have really cool gear that you can buy. Um, and also... Uh, Shitty Cowboys is our newest show. Uh, so if you could go subscribe to that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and give us a five-star rating review, that would mean a lot. And the cool thing about Shitty Cow- Cowboys is that it is a bi-weekly stream. It is every other Saturday, it, including this coming Saturday on this channel at uh, 6 o'clock Eastern. The cool thing about Shitty Cowboys is we release the latest podcast episode the Wednesday, so yesterday before um, the the stream. So even if you're behind on the podcast or the streams, you can listen to all the podcasts up to the uh, the stream that's coming on because we, we always are up to date on the podcast before the stream drops. Uh, so that's really cool. And so yeah, we'll be playing Shitty Cowboys this Saturday. Um, I'm very excited for that. I always get really, really, really excited when we do a Shitty Cowboys week. Um, so tune in. Even if you haven't, wa- even if you're not up to date, it's really we're only three episodes in, uh, and we recap at the beginning of every stream. So it's not like you're going to be missing a lot of stuff. So um, tune in this Saturday to this Twitch channel. Um, and other than that, like what you can do to support us, if you enjoy this content, um, not only this solo rolling, I know I've been talking a lot right now, but we've got like 16 minutes left of the stream. Um, a couple of ways that you can support the Majestic Goose, uh, network would be to a subscribe to all the shows we've got. We've got five now, Halfway to Heroes, One Shot Onslaught, Roll for Weird, Dice Talk, and Shitty Cowboys. You can subscribe to all the shows. Um, you can support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash one shot onslaught will support Halfway to Heroes, One Shot Onslaught, and Shitty Cowboys. Or you can uh, go to Patreon.com slash Roll for Weird and that will support just Roll for Weird. Because um, I don't edit that show. So, like, that, I want that to be like a separate thing. Um, that Sock doesn't have a Patreon yet. They may be getting one, but you can also uh pay for an advertisement on any of our shows and any of our streams if you want to uh have an advertisement on a stream you can get advertisements for mid rolls uh like an uh, actual like ad on the mid roll um you can get a uh icon a banner you can get a promo plug um really cheap too they're like 10 bucks for everything and then 20 bucks for halfway to heroes or one shot onslaught um and then join our Discord, bit.ly slash halfway to Discord. Follow us on all social media. 
uh, go to our Patreon pages, and then telling a friend about us and reviewing us. Those are all the ways you can help our show. Um, if you leave us a five star rating review on all of our shows, I would, I mean, I would love you forever. So yeah. And uh, other than that, I think I've been talking a whole lot. I think we're ready to end this one. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I would not be able to survive any of these without you all. So thank you all. And thank you, Weaver, for pretty much single-handedly <laughs> uh, uh, passing and uh, succeeding on this one. Uh, and if you guys haven't yet, my adventure to uh, tournament of tokens, I need like 25 more sales on that uh, to hit copper best-selling me metal. And uh, when I do that, I will forever say that I'm a best-selling DM's Guild author on every show I'm ever on. That's my whole goal of it. So um, it, you can scroll up and you can find um, uh, discounts on that for $2. Uh, and yeah, thank you all. I will talk to you all in two weeks on this show and this coming Saturday on Shitty Cowboys. Bye, everybody.